Are you telling me there was something wrong with the horse made her quit 300 yards from the finish? She hit the stretch and just quit. Turns out she sucked up air, you know, a couple gallons of air get trapped up in there and she cramps up and she can't run. Very uncommon. The working men of God's pocket are simple men. They work, marry, and have children. And until recently, they die like everyone else. 22-year-old construction worker was killed yesterday when he slipped and fell to his death. Leon Hubbard didn't slip on nothing. Something happened to Leon over at that job. Something nobody's told us yet. I'll see what I can find out. Jeannie's got some idea that something else happened on that Leon. I was hoping you could ask around for me. You want me to talk to Sal? I just want to make Jeannie feel better. I'm Richard Shelburne of the Daily Times. I'm so sorry for your loss. Yo, Mick, is the body messed up? It's just the back of his head. What I did has nothing to do with you. And what you got to worry about is making sure that everything is all right, and then you get your money. Mr. Shelburne. I need to know what happened to my boy, please. Why did they find his body in the street, Mickey? Leon was in the truck. With the meat. He was separated from the meat. I knew that would upset you. I've been writing the story of this city for 20 years. I love this city. That's the stupidest thing I heard all day. In a terrible... Stop, stop, off it. You're getting, yeah. you're getting blood all over your pants. God's Pocket. So, that's the trailer for God's Pocket, a 2014 movie that IMDb describes like so. A blue-collar worker tries to cover things up when his stepson is killed in a suspicious accident, but a local reporter senses that something's amiss. The movie set in South Philly, and it's based on Pete Dexter's novel, God's Pocket. Pete was a columnist for the Daily News. Now, let me tell you where the story comes from. The date's December 11th, 1981. Cold Friday night, and I'm sitting at the bar at Dirty Franks at 13th and Pine in Center City, drinking a Budweiser and shooting a shit with Tom Woodishit. He's a night bartender, and he's also a former Eagles running back, hard-nosed, and a fan favorite. I just finished another pressure-packed week at work. My buddy Bill Gaffney's talking on the payphone attached to the wall near the front entrance. Cell phones had not yet been invented. Bill and I worked together. He's calling Randall Cobb. You may know him as Randall Tex Cobb. Randall's a heavyweight boxer and an actor. You should recognize him from this shot from Raising Arizona. Anyway, Randall's throwing a party at his apartment across the river in Jersey and Bill's getting directions. We're going to drive across the bridge and join the party. Bill and Randall were roommates at one time, both boxers, trained at the same gym. Bill returns to the bar but says, we're not going anywhere. Something about Pete Dexter getting beat up and Randall leaving the party to seek revenge for Dexter. Sounds like serious business. But we don't know where they are, and without cell phones, we can't contact. Pete Dexter is a daily news columnist, and he and Randall are best friends. Also sparring partners for years and Randall's training for a fight with Muhammad Ali. Dexter wrote a column two days early. It goes like this. A couple of weeks ago, a kid named Billy Lego was found dead in Cobbs Creek. It was a Sunday afternoon. He was from the neighborhood, a good athlete, a nice kid, stoned all the time, the kind of kid you think you could have saved. The dead guy's family doesn't like the column. His mother calls Dexter at the newspaper crying. How could he write that her son was a drug user? Before Dexter can answer, the woman's other son jumps on the phone and demands a retraction. The brother's the night bartender at Doherty's Bar in the Grays Ferry section of South Philly. Tough neighborhood. So Dexter goes straight to the bar to try to work things out. And he goes alone. He finds the bartender and four other men waiting for him. And once again, the brother demands a retraction. I ain't changing nothing, Dexter says. I trust my sources. I'm just here to tell you that. Dexter never sees the first punch come. Someone's fist crunches the right side of his face and sends bits and pieces of his teeth flying out of his mouth. 
and he never sees a second punch coming either. He escapes the attack and drives straight to Randall's apartment in Jersey. Now, Dexter, Randall, and seven other guys from the party drive over to Doherty's bar, seeking retribution for what just happened to Dexter. We want to join them, cover their backs, but have no idea where they are. So, we have another beer. But those guys walk into a trap. The bartender and the same four guys are still there, and no one else. And Dexter says, there will be no sucker punches now. Here's how Pete describes what happened next. So this little fat guy gets up, goes outside for something. The next thing I know, the room is filled up, maybe 30 guys. They got tire irons and baseball bats. Randall jokes, I hope this is a local softball team. We started heading out the door. Randall and I were the last ones out. It's freezing, rain and sweet on the streets. Randall got hit with a crowbar, and I ran toward the guy who did it. I wanted to bite that fat fucker's face. And then the lights went out. Pete Dexter severely injured. Broken pelvis, cracked femur, nerve damage to his hands, a concussion, bleeding on the brain, two fractures in his spine, and 90 stitches in his scalp. He survives, but the incident changes his life. He quits the Daily News and starts writing articles for Playboy and Sports Illustrated. And he starts writing novels. God's Pocket, Deadwood are two. Deadwood goes on to become an HBO series, and God's Pocket becomes this move. Randall got his arm broken, and his fight with Ali is canceled. He does recover and eventually fights with Ari Holmes for the World Heavyweight title in the Astrodome. And that incident goes down in the books as the Gray's Ferry Incident. And if we had cell phones back then, who knows what would have happened to my buddy Bill and I. Sorry, just ran a little long. I'll break down the movie next time. Thanks for stopping in today. Until next time. See. And that's a wrap.